I ask you a question? When you hear, like four hours after an event, Obama's going to speak, don't you cringe? Am I alone in this reaction? It's like, oh, geez, Obama's going to speak. Shut up. Nobody cares what you have to say. We all know you're an incompetent and your administration's full of boobs. Isn't that what goes through your head? It goes through mine. And then he talks like he's got authority about the su- over the subject. And, uh, and I told him. No, not, and then he, oh, now what they have to do is got to do this, and they have to do this, and they're going to do this, and they're going to... Shut up. With all due respect, El Presidente, they don't give a damn what you have to say. Matter of fact, Americans barely give a damn what you have to say. With all due respect. Yeah, we're going to uh, break up this show a little bit with a little bit of fun in a little while. But uh, we'll continue to press ahead as the reporters keep telling us what a handful of people keep telling them. I heard reports this morning. Hundreds of people have gathered around Parliament. Hundreds of people. There's hundreds of people at the Wegman in line over here trying to get lobsters on sale. Hundreds, growing to thousands and tens of thousands. I was at a Tea Party rally. I was told there are 20, 25,000 people there. We also got estimates of 45,000 people. Did you hear the reporting? Oh, my God, there's thousands and thousands of people rallying at the Capitol trying to reverse course on health care. No, it was. Can you see all the racists? Look at the racists there. And they all look like old white people. Have you known? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't see any young ones. They're just old white people. That's all I see out there. And they're racists. Look at the sign that one ha- Are you hearing that about these protesters? I don't mean old white people. Obviously, they're not. But anybody analyzing their signs? Anybody trying to figure out who they are? No. Just look at all of them. And by the way, that was only one rally. There were other rallies with tens of thousands of people. Now oh, it's the teabaggers. Now, oh, there they are, the, the teabaggers. There they, there they are. There they are. They're just disgruntled. Anyway, uh... Let's take some calls here. If, by the way, if this wasn't so sick, it would be hilarious. Lewis, upstate New York, Sirius Satellite, go. Mark, um, I just had a question. What do you think the uh, odds are of President Obama talking about the importance of the separation of church and state in the new Egypt and maybe Thomas Friedman writing about it? It means separation of mosque and state. And uh, Dr. Zudi Jasser, our buddy, who was on yesterday, made the point that... Uh, this is what the Muslim Brotherhood is pressing for. Not separation, obviously, but control of state. And um, we already know, and I get your rhetorical point, Lewis, the president's already invited in the Muslim Brotherhood, hasn't he? To help be a part of the government. And by the way, I didn't hear him saying the Coptic Christians should be invited into the government, did you? No, I didn't. Now, if the Coptic Christian population is 10 to 20% of Egypt, and the Muslim Brotherhood represents 20% of Egypt... Why didn't he say, hey, I want universal values. Hell yeah, we'll reach out to the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Coptic Christians need to have a seat at the table, too. You want to know why, Lewis? He's a fraud, and the uh, and the entire administration is a farce. Thank you for your call. Then we have this idiot Wolf Blitzer on CNN suggesting that uh, Obama's speech in Cairo may have had an impact on what went on there in 2009. Let's go to that that clip. A hat tip, real clear politics. Cut ten. Go. Yeah, we're in, a lot of us remember that speech that President Obama gave in Cairo back in 2009. Uh, I'm not sure he expected that this would develop. Uh, I don't know if that was a result of this or what the, the impact was, but it was a dramatic speech at the time, and and now we're seeing what's happening on the streets of Cairo, uh, and I suspect it's going to spread elsewhere. This is the reporting we get. A lot of us remember the speech Obama gave in 2009. I'm not sure he expected this would develop. I'm sure he didn't. He was clueless right up to the last minute, uh, Wolf. Now we're seeing what's happening on the streets of Cairo. I expect, I expect it will spread elsewhere. What kind of reporting is this? This is what I mean. This is a reporter. Meanwhile, CARE's favorite congressman, Keith Ellison, Democrat Minnesota, was on MSLSD yesterday. Hat tip real clear politics. And he wants you to know, calm down on this Muslim Brotherhood stuff, will you? Cut nine, go. The people in Tahrir Square, some of them are religious, some of them are not. But this is a demand for dignity, democracy, and bread and jobs. And it's exciting. It's, it's both sexes, different kinds of people. 
Christian, Muslim, people of all different kinds of backgrounds. This is about the people. It has nothing to do with what some sectarian group's agenda is. And, you know, it, this is a scarecrow, this, this talk about the Muslim Brotherhood. But the most important thing is this is a group of people who are rejecting al-Qaedaism, rejecting religious extremism, and saying they want what we already have, which is democracy. This is a group of people who are rejecting al-Qaedaism, rejecting religious extremism. Well, the Muslim Brotherhood doesn't reject religious extremism. They are involved in the protest. Let, let's look at it a little differently. Let's step back. Do you folks think the Muslim Brotherhood is not involved in these protests? Why wouldn't they be? Now, if the Muslim Brotherhood is involved in these protests, other than Mubarak's removal, which has now taken place, what is it that they want? Now, we know what they want. They've told us what they want. They've armed up to get what they want. They spread like a poison. So the question is, they were involved in these protests. Mubarak is gone. Now the question shouldn't be generically, now what? My question for you is this. Now what will the Muslim Brotherhood do? They're going to go home and watch TV on satellite? They're going to listen to Barack Obama? Oh, that Barack Obama. He wants a constitution. He wants free speech. Well, what Barack Obama says, we're going to comply with. Now, you know that's not going to happen. You think they're going to be a positive force for democracy? So what is going to happen with the Muslim Brotherhood in the period between Mubarak now leaving, the implementation, the establishment of a government, and thereafter? What Keith Ellison says is, don't worry about them. Don't pay attention to them. What the head of our intelligence services says is, don't worry about them. Don't pay attention to them. What Obama and Hillary Clinton say is, we're reaching out to them. We want them to be part of the government. I can promise you this. If they're part of the government, the government will fail. I can promise you this. If a new, quote-unquote, democratic government doesn't have an iron fist approach to them, it will fail too. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America will fail if Islamo-Nazis, people who promote, who promote the forced implementation of Sharia law, who are members of groups that go back to the Third Reich, 1928, I promise you that our society can't survive it unless they are monitored and dealt with as necessary should they break any laws. In our own country, do we say we invite the Muslim Brotherhood into our democratic process? I didn't say, does this administration do it in the shadows? I said, do we have pronouncements coming from any politicians? Any, including Obama. We want the Muslim Brotherhood in our government. We want the Muslim Brotherhood to have a prominent role in our government. Why not? If they're secular and they're nonviolent, why not? Instead, what they do is they try to dumb us down. They try and convince you. And it's like the League of Women Voters. Well, it's not like the League of Women Voters. They're a bunch of uh, backstabbing, conniving thugs. Totalitarians. Not to be underestimated ever. And certainly not to be invited into our government or any nascent government. Any, any barely born government. Because they'll destroy it from within. So the question isn't, what now for Egypt? The question to me is, those who are telling us that the Muslim Brotherhood is not a big deal, what now for the Muslim Brotherhood? Now that Mubarak is gone, what do you think, ladies and gentlemen, because you're smarter than all these politicians put together, what do you think the Muslim Brotherhood is up to right now as I'm speaking? They're plotting. They're conniving. They're trying to figure out how to take maximum advantage of the moment, how to exploit it. And they're much better at it than those folks, these idiot reporters are shoving microphones in their faces are. I love democracy, I love democracy. I bet she does, because I do too, which is one of the reasons we fight Obama. But while she's in the streets yelling, the Muslim Brotherhood is plotting. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. This is going to really drive you nuts. ABC News blog, Jake Tapper. Sources tell ABC News that after Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak spoke last night, handing over powers to his vice president but not stepping down, the White House and Obama administration in general conveyed to the Egyptian government at all levels his message was not enough for the demonstrators whom they needed to satisfy 
or that crisis would continue and get worse. On Thursday, White House and administration officials had been told by Mubarak advisors he was planning to step down, but no one was certain what he would do. Members of Mubarak's own cabinet thought he was stepping down, but Mubarak has proven himself mercurial and quite reluctant to give up power and blah, blah. Uh, ABC News, you're embarrassing yourself. Jake Tapper, you're usually pretty good. You are embarrassing yourself. Sources told you you're being fed. You're being fed to promote Obama and his incoherence and his administration's idiocy. They had nothing to do with Mubarak stepping down. His generals likely went to him and said, Step down. We'll be right back. Jesse, Green Bay, Wisconsin, XM Satellite. Gee, I think you have quite a little team there, Jesse. Thank you. Now, you're a police officer, is that correct? That is correct. So if I'm driving through your little town uh, about oh, 10 miles over the speed limit, you wouldn't you wouldn't drag me in for that, would you? 10 miles an hour, that'll just get you a warning. I can That's do that it, right? You. Right. That's All right. right, brother. Go right ahead. Uh, yesterday you were talking to, I believe, a Democrat about um, the health care, and he asked you if everybody should be covered. And you had made the comment about how some people have satellite TV and when, you know, we shouldn't be paying for their health care. Well, I've been to a lot of low-income, welfare-type houses, and it, you know, it never fails that they have, you know, a nicer TV than I have, nicer vehicles, um, you know, Xbox 360s, all the fancy stuff, and it's just, you know, I don't know why in this country we started, you know, thinking that everybody deserves to have everything like that. You know, and the working people, I mean, we, you know, that work, we, if we can afford it, we have it, but I don't understand how these other people, you know, feel that they're owed this type of property. Well, you know, Jesse, that was my point. When somebody says, don't you think everyone has a right to health care? Now, if that is the claim, then don't I have a right to know what those people actually possess in order to yeah. make that decision on whether or not you or I or anybody else should deny your family's additional money because somebody else is blowing theirs? I mean, it just seems stupid to me. Why should I buy somebody health care if they can afford it and aren't buying it for themselves? I agree. Well, you're the and, man. You know, That's why you can... walk around with a gun. <laughs> yeah, and, it, you know, I can work our tails off, and, you know, they can, some of these people sit at home every day, every year, and, they, you know, they get everything they ever wanted. It's just amazing to me. All right, Jesse, be safe out there. Thank you. All right, take care. I know I approach these issues differently. Rationally, logically, break them down. When people make general comments, you know, doesn't everybody have a right to, well, excuse me, who are these people? What do they own? How much do they make? What have they purchased? If somebody voluntarily determines that they want to have NFL football games and satellite TV, which isn't cheap. Uh, it's good. Instead of health care, well, why am I buying them health care so they can have, and not just satellite TV, iPhones, you name it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 